there are several different ways that we write chemical formulas, and some of them are more common than others, but the molecular formula is something like C2H6 for the molecule ethane. And the molecular formula will show the actual number of atoms. So we know that any, in any unit of ethane, we have two carbons and six hydrogens. Um, similar to that, but showing lowest whole number ratios is the empirical formula, which for the same compound would be CH3, because we can divide both the subscripts by, by two. So we have um, the empirical formula is the smallest whole number ratio of the different atoms. Oops. Okay, so for ethane, the empirical formula is CH3, and empirical formulas are generally the kind that you can find out from certain types of experimental methods where you get a ratio of masses for different elements. Okay, and there are just a few others to show you. There's, there's ways to show the structure of a molecule in the formula, the way it's written, and for ethane, that would be... Um, one possible way to do it is showing the bonds directly for ethane. Okay, so you show the bonds. And different structural formulas will show different degrees of the bonding. So um, this one shows quite a lot of the bonding. You could just show the fact that there's two CH3 units by writing it like this. And sometimes people simply write it like CH3, CH3 without the line, which does show you more about the structure than simply writing C2H6. So there's varying degrees of how much information you give by how you write it. All right, so the empirical formula is what we're going to focus on, and some ways of determining empirical formulas from mass percent, and then determining mass percent from empirical formulas. Okay, so if you do an experiment and you have some, you know you have a compound with chlorine and silicon, and you've determined that by weight, by mass, 79.1% of it is chlorine, and you want to find out what the formula is, you can find out the ratio of the two atoms this way, and that gives you the empirical formula. So the process is four steps. The first one is you choose some convenient sample size, and most of the time we'll just choose 100 grams. And why is that easy? Why is that a convenient size? That's convenient because then you can say that 79.1 grams of it is chlorine. Okay, so 79.1 grams of chlorine, and by subtraction you know then how much silicon you have, which is 20.9 grams of silicon because the total is 100 and we only have two elements in it. All right, so we take those grams. Remember, it doesn't matter which size we take because all we care about is the ratio. So we take those two and we convert them to moles. First for chlorine, 79.1 grams chlorine. Use the molar mass. And we find we have 2.23 grams of chlorine. Or no, sorry, moles. Moles of chlorine. All right, because we converted to moles. All right, and then for the silicon, 20.9 grams of silicon. Convert it to moles. And it, using its molar mass, 28.09 grams of silicon, and we find that we have 0.744 moles of silicon. Okay, so now we know the mole ratio, and since a formula is basically a mole ratio, we can um, take... So third step is take mole ratios, and generally I'd put the larger one on top. So we'll take the mole ratio, um, we'll put large over small. Okay, so that would be the moles of chlorine over the moles of silicon. So that's 2.23 
over 0.744, and that gives you approximately 3. Okay, so the ratio of chlorine to silicon in this formula is 3 to 1, so we know the formula is SiCl3. That's the empirical formula. All right, and then the fourth step is you can, by knowing the empirical formula, you can list some possible molecular formulas. Okay, it is possible that that's just the whole formula, SiCl3. But it's also possible that it could be anything that has a 3 to 1 ratio. So Si2, Cl6, or Si3, Cl9, you hopefully get the picture. So you can list possible molecular formulas. All right, let's see if you can try it. And this is for two different compounds. Okay, so we have compound A and compound B, both of which contain hydrogen and oxygen, but by different amounts. So do A first, and then do B, and figure out what the molecular or the empirical formulas are. Okay, we'll start with A, and we have both percents were given, although it wouldn't be necessary because they got to add to 100%. So then we can use a convenient size, which is 100 grams, and then we'll say we have 11 grams of hydrogen and 89 grams of oxygen. And let's convert each of those to moles. Molar mass of hydrogen is 1.008. And so that gives us 10.91 moles of hydrogen atom. For the oxygen, take 89 grams. Its molar mass is about 16. And that gives us 5.56 moles of oxygen. All right, let's take some ratios. Let's take a ratio. 10.91, the bigger one, 10.91 moles of hydrogen over 5.56 moles of oxygen. And that gives you a number very close to 2. So the ratio of hydrogen to oxygen is 2 to 1. And so that makes H2O. And of course, to be complete, we have to say that it could also be h 4, O2, and others, but um, we do know that H2O is a common compound with hydrogen and oxygen, so um, it could be a higher one, but we can be pretty sure that it's not. All right, the other compound with hydrogen and oxygen. Let's assume a mass of 100 grams, so we have 6 grams of hydrogen and 94 grams of oxygen, and do the same process, converting them to moles and taking mole ratios. just like we did for the other compound. Okay, and so this gives us 5.95 moles of H atoms, 94 grams of oxygen converted to moles is 94. Try that again, 94 grams of oxygen converted to moles gave us 5.88 moles of oxygen. We take the ratio 5.95 moles of hydrogen over 5.88 moles of oxygen and we find the ratio is very close to 1. So the empirical formula would be HO or H2O2, or H3O3, etc., etc., and it turns out that it actually, that H2O2 is peroxide, hydrogen peroxide, and so that's very likely the one. All right, um, now we can also go backwards and find mass percent from a formula. Let's do that for iron in iron 3 oxide. Okay, so the way to find the mass percent is we simply take the mass 
of iron per formula unit. The formula unit is Fe2O3. And divide that by the molar mass of the whole substance. And then to make it a percent, we multiply by 100%. All right, so there's two irons in every formula unit, so we'll take the, we'll multiply by two the molar mass the, of iron. We'll divide that by the molar mass of the entire compound. And then multiply the whole thing by 100% and that gives us 69.94% iron by mass because these are grams, ratios of grams per mole. So 69.94% iron by mass in iron 3 oxide. All right, time for you to try one. What's the mass percent for each element in NaClO2? All right, give it a try and then start the video again. All right, so we can calculate the entire molar mass of this substance by adding everything up and we get 90.44 grams per mole. All right, so let's do each element at a time. Sodium, we have um, the mass, we only have one sodium in here, so the molar mass of sodium is 22.99990. Divide that by the entire mass, and they're both grams per mole. Multiply by 100%, and you'll get 25.42% sodium in that compound. Now we can do chlorine. The molar mass for chlorine, there's only one of them, so we just use the regular atomic mass. Divide by the total and multiply by 100%, and that one is 39.20% for sodium. And then oxygen, there's two oxygens, so we have to multiply that one by two. Molar mass of oxygen is 16, divided by the total, and we get 35.38. And just to check, you could add these up. They should, of course, total 100% because there's nothing in the compound other than sodium, chlorine, and oxygen.